today we are going to discuss on the fossil fuels actually fossil fuels are nothing but the energy sources that were formed from the ancient plants and organisms during the carboniferous period and it has been buried under soil approximately 360 to 286 million years ago so these are nothing but the fossils fossil organic matter which gradually converted into a fuel due to the death of organisms and the plants they sank into the bottom of the swamps and the oceans and form layers of the spongy material called peat now these peats are nothing but the sources or the we find the wells of the fossil fuel over the millions of years the peat was covered by the sand clay and the minerals which converted the peat into a sedimentary rock over the time different types of the fossil fuels are formed depending on the combination of organic matter present how long it was buried and what temperature and the pressure conditions existed when they are decomposing so all these matters plays an important role in the formation of the fossil fuels there are basically three types of the fossil fuels that is coal oil and the natural gases so these are nothing but the three different processes where the three different types of the plant and organisms has been involved particularly plants are involved in the fossil fuels coal is nothing but the hardened matter and which is formed due to the pressure and heat whereas oil are from the most of the time zooplankton and the unicellular organisms where from which it can be called the complex organic matter and after decomposition it can convert it into an oil whereas the natural gases are nothing but the same process as the oil formation is taken place however in this process it is the higher amount of the heat and pressure plays an important role which the oils can be converted into a gaseous state and causing the further decomposition so these are basically the three types of the fossil fuels various type of the concerns while using these fossil fuels the fossil fuels are nothing but the non renewable resources once they used they can be finished as they have taken millions of years to form it is our prime duty to conserve them or to protect them once these resources are used they will not be replenished and because of that the proper utilization of these sources well managed the utilization of these resources is necessary these unconventional resources usually have higher production cost and the greater risk of the environmental impacts because whenever these fuels get used decomposed catalyzed so in such process we find that there is the breakdown of the organic matter and normally releases the carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide in the air which uh, has the major impact on the air pollution moreover fossil fuels are the largest source of carbon dioxide a greenhouse gas which contributes to climate change and because of that we must have to control over the use of these fossil fuels and their production causes the both environmental as well as the human health impact and because of that we must have to at least used whenever necessary so the well planned use of these resources can extend the life of these resources as well as we can minimize the air or the other type of the pollutions which is caused due to the carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide contributions of the professor birbal sahani as we know professor birbal sahani is the legendary name in the field of paleobotany he was a scholar and scientist and a man of deep religious convictions he was born on november 14 1891 at bhera a town in a west punjab which is now in pakistan his father lala ruchiram sahni was a professor of chemistry at the lahore government college he had also worked with the rutherford at the cambridge he was a brilliant student he passed the matriculation 
from the Punjab University and graduated in the botany from the Government College Lahore, took admission at the Emmanuel College, Cambridge and studied the natural science. Then he took up research under the Professor A.C. Stewart, a renowned paleobotanist of his time. He obtained a DSc degree for his work on the fossil plants in the 1990. Yeah, in 1990, he was appointed professor of botany at the Banaras Hindu University. And then he moved to Lahore and taught botany there at the Punjab University. In the 1921, he came to Lucknow as a professor uh, in the Lucknow University. In 1933, he was made dean of the faculty of the science in the Lucknow University. Then he continued at the Lucknow University as the head of department of botany and latter of geology uh, till he breathed the most coveted British scientific honor was bestowed to him by electing him a fellow of Royal Society London. He was the first botanist to study the ferns and the flora of Gondwana land. He discovered a number of entirely new fossil plants, revised their old species and their geological ranges. Here you can find, this is the uh, basic 200 million year ago Triassic period and the earth which was present at that time. Here you can find two basic landmarks are there, that Laurasia and the Gondwana land. And the other part which is all covered with the sea. But gradually, because of the tectonics, plate tectonics, the movement in the plates has been taken place on the earth. And here you can find the gradual separation has been taken place. This is the Asian continent here. It is India and the other part has been shown here. In this particular year, we find there is the basically a fern members are found in this Gondwana land. These discoveries lent up to the continental drift theory of the Wagner. Here you can uh, find the various uh, plates has been shown with the different colors and their movement, the plate movement has been shown by the arrow. So they are still moving and various type of the changes, geological changes are taking place. Overall, it was the single mass of a land called the Pangaea. But after began the drifting, apart from 200 million year ago, separation has been taken place. This is the pentothylic group, which has been discovered and rearranged by the Professor Birbal Sahani. In the Rajmal hills of the Bihar, he discovered a new interesting class of the fossil plants and his discovery of these pentos highlights, this group, attracted worldwide attention. So it was a totally new finding by the Professor Birbal Sahani. He was awarded many upon national and international honors for his researches and the pioneer work in these fields. The famous Institute of Paleobotany Lucknow was a brainchild of the Professor Birbal Sahani. He has honored by many recognitions. A few days before his final departure, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru had the foundation stone on the, of the Institute of Paleobotany at Lucknow. Later, this institute was renamed as a Birbal Institute of the Paleobotany. An award called the Birbal Gold Award was also instituted in his memory and it's presented every year to the best botanist in the country. This is the front elevation of Birbal Sahani Pura Vidnyan Sansthan Birbal Sahani Institute of the Paleo Sciences. So this is all about the contributions of Professor Birbal Sahani in the field of paleobotany.